This will talk about the heap memory. Let's review what we discussed before. Computer memory is divided into kernel and user space. The kernel space is used by operating system only. Thus, this course will not talk about kernel space any further. In the user space, the memory is further divided into stack, heap, and program memory. We have talked about the stack memory. It follows the strict rule of first in, last out, or, last in, first out. The program memory stores the program. This is a review of using stack memory and pointers for the swap function. Now, let's talk about the heap memory. This is a comparison of the stack and heap memory. As mentioned earlier, stack memory follows last in, first out rule. New frames are pushed to the top of the stack memory. When a function ends, its frame is popped. Heap memory has no such restriction. Stack memory may store four types of things, return location, arguments, local variables, and value address. The size of stack memory needed for a frame is determined at compilation time based on the sizes of the variables. Heap memory has no such restriction. The size of memory can be determined at when the program is running. The same program may allocate different amounts of memory based on the amount of data given to the program. Stack memory is managed by compiler. In contrast, heap memory is managed by programmers. A function can see only its own frame. It is possible to see the frames lower in the stack memory, if pointers are used. The swap function is an example passing the addresses to a function. Heap memory has no such restriction. A piece of heap memory can be passed around different functions. Stack memory does not necessarily use pointers. Heap memory must use pointers. The following topics are more advanced. Stack memory's computation model is pushed down automata. Heap memory's computation model is Turing machine. If a computer program can use only stack memory, this program is limited. Some problems cannot be solved. If a program can use heap memory, this program can solve more problems. In fact, the problems that can be solved by a Turing machine is a proper superset of the problems that can be solved by a pushdown automata. If you are interested in the computing models, please find a book about computation theory or automata theory. This slide shows how heap memory can be used. Suppose you want to create an array of five integers. The first step is to create a pointer. Then, call the malloc function with the proper size of the data type and the number of elements we need. Please notice that the input for size of does not have asterisk. After malloc, we can use p as the name of an array and give correct indexes. If the array has five elements, Valid indexes are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Please be aware that 5 is invalid. If you use 5 as the index, the program's behavior is undefined. Later on, when the array is no longer needed, use the free function to release the memory. Let's take one step at a time and see how stack and heap memory change. The first step creates a pointer in the stack memory. The pointer is a local variable and thus it is on the stack memory. Please be careful that piece value is not initialized and thus is unknown. Please be careful. Piece value may not be zero. The next step calls malloc. The malloc function returns an address in the heap memory. Suppose malloc returns address 1000. 1000 is written to the value of p. Please notice that the elements are not initialized. Thus, we put u to the elements. The address of the array is determined by malloc. 
If we run the same program again, it is very likely that malloc will return another address. Because each element is an integer, each element takes 4 bytes. The following equation about addresses is correct. The address of the element with index k is the address of the element with index 0, plus k multiplied with the size of each element. This equation is always true for any type of array. After malloc, we can use the array elements. This example sets 264 to the value of the array element whose index is 0. Please remember that in C programs, array indexes start from 0. There is no exception. The next example assigns minus 2020 to the value of the element whose index is 4. The program can use the array elements. If the array is no longer needed, use free to release the memory. The heap memory is no longer available. Please be careful that piece value is still address 1000. Piece value is not changed by calling free. Here are some important principles of using heap memory. First, malloc and free are always together. Each malloc must have one and exactly one free. Each free must have one and exactly one malloc. There is no exception to this rule. The allocated memory is not initialized. We do not know what is stored in the values of the memory allocated by malloc. The array index always starts from zero. The last valid index is the array's size minus one. There is no exception. Using the size as the index is wrong. The program's behavior is undefined. It is difficult to know what the program may or may not do later. Calling free releases the heap memory. However, the value of p is unchanged. You must not assume that p's value becomes null. Allocated heap memory must be released by calling free. Otherwise, the program leaks memory. In ECE 264, memory leak is not allowed. Some people mistakenly think it is acceptable if a program works sometimes. This isn't correct. What does it mean when we say a program's behavior is undefined? If a program's behavior is undefined, sometimes the program seems working. Sometimes, the program does not work. What is truly problematic is that when a program's behavior is undefined, the program usually does not work during grading. There were many examples in the past when students tested their programs and believed their programs were correct. When their programs were graded, their programs did not work. In almost all cases, the reasons were the same. The program's behaviors were undefined. Overwhelmingly majority cases used incorrect indexes. If an array has n elements, valid indexes are zero, 1, 2. The largest index is n minus 1. n is an invalid index. This is a fact. Let me emphasize it again. If an array has n elements, n is an invalid index. Please read it aloud with me. If an array has n elements, n is an invalid index. Let's read it again. If an array has n elements, n is an invalid index. Let's see some common mistakes when using heap memory. The first common mistake is type mismatch. If p is an integer pointer inside malloc, we should use size of n. It must be int, not any other type. The reason is that different types have different sizes. Also, we must not add asterisk inside size of p is an integer pointer. That means the address pointed by p is an integer. We have already said many times, if the array has five elements, five in an invalid index. Another common mistake is not to free memory and cause memory leak. After freeing, p is no longer valid address for heap memory. 
Thus, we must not use P after calling free. Let's talk about memory leak. In many cases, a program that leaks memory may not seem obviously wrong. However, if a program leaks memory, the program will eventually run out of memory and stops. Leaking memory is not acceptable. Thinking of memory leak like leaking fuel. ECE-264 will use heap memory a lot. Heap memory gives a lot of flexibility. The freedom comes with responsibility. Each malloc must have one and only one free. Each free must have one and only one malloc. They always come in pairs. Always. No exception. A good strategy of writing correct programs is to think about malloc and free as pairs. When you write your programs, put malloc and free inside the same functions. The function allocates memory, uses the memory, and then release the memory. By putting malloc and free inside the function, the chance of mistakes is much lower. Before you use malloc, think about where free will be called.